Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I am Roger Killen, the organizer. Our speaker is Lucas Mattiello. You wouldn't expect someone who was diagnosed with an anxiety condition to become a public speaking trainer, but that's precisely what Lucas did. Lucas specializes in helping entrepreneurs to speak with confidence, both on stage and on video. Lucas is an internationally renowned communications trainer. He has been featured in Forbes, is a best-selling author, and a TEDx speaking coach. If you have a question for Lucas, please type it into the chat. And whenever there's a logical break in Lucas's talk, I will uh, ask him your questions, and he has committed himself to answering them all. It's now time for us to put our digital hands together and give Lucas a warm VBN welcome. Yay. Oh, he's not clapping. Okay, there we go. Lucas, <laughs> take it away. All yours. All right. All right. Thank you so much for having me here. And uh, in today's presentation, we'll talk about three steps to become confident on video, even if you are deathly afraid of putting yourself out there. And I'm excited to get into this. Uh, it's a very interesting time and we're seeing a shift towards video and for businesses to thrive, we need to go there. So I want to say thank you so much and we'll jump right into it. So first of all, I just want to let you know that you're in the right place. If you're in any one of these three categories, you're in the right place. So either you've never put yourself out on video and you're deathly afraid to do so. Well, congrats. You're in the right place. Maybe you have put out videos, but it's a very uncomfortable process. You go through, it just, you get drained, it's, it's uncomfortable, it's frustrating. You're in the right place, you'll be getting help today. And the third one is maybe you regularly put out videos, but you want to just, you want to be more effective or to allow the real you to shine through when you're on video. So if you're in any one of these categories, you're in the right place today, our three steps to be confident on video is going to help you. So you've never put videos out there, you do it and it's uncomfortable, or you regularly do it, you just want to get that, that edge to allow the real you to shine through, you'll be getting value from today's talk. Now, in this training, what you're going to learn is first, why now is the In this training, you'll learn why now is the best time to be confident on video. Hang on, I got a little feedback. I think, how are you going? How are you going? That was unexpected. All right. So that was interesting. But uh, look, in this training, what you're going to get is why now is the best time to be confident on video. Uh, two is the top three myths that hold businesses back from being on video. And the third one is three steps to start your confident on video journey. And I call it a journey because this is not something that's going to just happen overnight. It takes time, but now is the right time. And I'm going to qualify that a bit more. Now, our new reality, you know, we're in a very interesting time in, in the world, uh, uh, unprecedented time, where COVID has shut down live events and talks. I mean, that's the reality. No live talks going on, no conferences going on, no live networking uh, working groups going on. They are all done. So if you're in business, it's a hard time to go. There's a lot of impact right now that's happening and we are being shut down. So COVID's changed the game. Now, here's the thing too, is we, we're also now moving towards what I call the exposure era. Okay, I'm gonna qualify that. The exposure era is the world that we're in now. And it's, if you're not sharing your message online right now, if you are not sharing your message online, you are invisible, okay? You're invisible. You literally don't exist because people are not walking around. They're not seeing you at conferences. They're not seeing you at networking events. They're not watching your live talks. So how do you get your message out there? Well, we are in the exposure era and there's only one way to do that. And that is by sharing your message online. And I reinforce this, it's absolutely essential for a business to not only th not thrive, but even survive. We need to shift and focus on taking our message on video. And in this exposure era, it's no longer, you know, who, you know, it's about who knows you. And this is something that's very hard for some people to embrace or to even accept. I've got into arguments with, with people on Facebook, surprise, surprise, that, you know, uh, I remember one gentleman, he was a personal trainer and he was complaining about the young punks who, you know, they're, they're not good at personal training, but they know how to use a video and get their message out there. 
And I said, hey, that's true, but the landscape has changed. And he was going on about his 20 years of experience. And that is all very true. But in the medium, especially right now, no live events, these younger people, maybe they know how to use video, but it's, it's the medium that it's going towards. And it's not to, you know, the experience is a real thing. That's a very valuable tool. At the same time, it is something that needs to be embraced, you know, and then that's something that comes up. Uh, actually, a lot of clients in my Confident on Video course, when I was doing market research, a, a constant theme that came up was some people were saying that they felt like they were too old or their demographic didn't fit into video. And it's interesting because if you look at the, you know, the distribution, yes, it is, you know, younger people, younger generation have more familiarity around technology, but at the same time, it's a massive opportunity for people, you know, that do have more experience to be the leaders, to really showcase that. Yeah. It, this isn't something that if you're 20 or 30 years old, it's exclusive to them because the game has changed. And so that's something that I really want to encourage you to start looking at. Because a lot of times when we don't have a lot of role models, it can, it can change our mindset, think it's not possible, but instead we, we can flip this around. And so again, it's, not, it's no longer about who you know, it's about who knows you. When you are well-known, people seek you out, okay? So you can have an amazing network behind you, but at the end of the day, we're in business and business means getting clients. When you get clients, that's when you can actually help somebody. And so if you are well-known, that's gonna be the game changer that's gonna take your business to the next level. Okay, so that's why it's really important. Now, the best part is that this new reality that we're in right now, it is a gold rush, okay? I cannot emphasize this anymore. It's a gold rush. It's an amazing opportunity. COVID has shut down all these live events, but it's actually preventing, it's providing a gold rush opportunity because the future has been fast-tracked to now, okay? So we've been building up towards video for years. It's been building up and it just fast-tracked it to right now. This is very binary. You're either putting yourself out on video or you're not. And the ones who do are gonna be ahead. The ones who don't, well, that train has left the station. So now it's a decision of catch up, but it's a decision of how much catch up do you wanna play? Do you wanna get on it now? Or do you want to let that train go even further? And then you have to catch up even more. My, my suggestion, my desire is that you take action today and you get started on this journey. Just start doing videos because this is, it's not turning around. It's not going the other way. So even with this gold rush of an opportunity, you know, Cisco present, uh, predicts that 82% of internet traffic will be video by 2022. And this was before COVID. But we see this. Remember when, you know, when cell phones were starting out, if you had one gig of data, two gigs of data, that was a big five gigs. I remember when that came out, five gigs, that was a huge amount. And then now we're seeing plans where five, that's, that's uh, people don't have five anymore, it's 10. It's 15, it's 20, you go to the States, it's unlimited. You know, we have all these, the data is just exploding. Why? Because so much of our content, which we consume on social media, which we consume on websites, it's video based. And so again, this isn't going anywhere. It's an opportunity right now. If there's certain fears that are holding you back, it's about facing them because the more that we, that you wait, the worse it's going to be. Okay. It's because it's not turning around and every successful business owner, they understand that they need they, they understand the need for exposure to build your platform and to help people. And the way to do that right now is through video, but every single business owner that's going to thrive in this time that is thriving, they understand that you need to share your message in a big way, get that exposure, build your authority platform. And I share the message. I say authority platform because you know, decades ago, the stars were on TV. Right? I'm sure you remember that. You, know, you had a friend or a family friend or a relative and they got spotlighted on a, on a TV show. Everyone would talk about it. They go, oh my God, so-and-so, they were on TV. What did you catch? Did you see they were on TV. That was such a big thing. Well, now the TV has changed. People aren't watching TV as much. It's now this, it's the phone. And so when your ideal clients are searching and they see you on a video, it's the new TV. And it's a way that you don't have to go to you know, executives and producers to get on. You can do it yourself. So it's an absolute gold rush of an opportunity for you to use that. And the number one fear is your secret weapon if you have courage. Okay, and a lot, of, this isn't about being amazing at video. This isn't about being the most confident person on video. This is just about having the courage to get started. Okay, so you are in an, a gold rush situation where most people are too afraid to ever put themselves out on video. And if you have the courage to get started, that's gonna fast track you. It's gonna pay off many times over. So that's my 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 suggestion, that's my encouragement for you, 
is to look at it and go, okay, video is no longer an option. I need to do this and I need to do it now. Now I have a bonus for you if this is a pre-video checklist. So this is a very valuable tool. A lot of times people think, look, I want to do videos, but the nerves kick up. I'm not sure how to get started. This is a free checklist for you. I'm going to give it to you. And you see here right now, uh, if you go through it, the first part is check in with yourself. So just get in, get in the right state. Uh, the second piece is about check in with your set. You know, make sure your gear, make sure your equipment is set up, make sure everything's right. And then check in with your content. And then the fourth one is let yourself be heard. And this is a checklist you could print out. You could keep it next to your phone. When you're recording videos, it's a constant reminder to go through. Now, this is going to give you a routine to be confident, to make sure you don't forget anything. And it's going to reduce the stress and get you in the right state. So how you get this is you go to leveluploving.com slash PVC. That stands for pre-video checklist. If this is of interest, you want this, it's a free gift I'm giving to you. It's going to help you get started on your journey. Go to leveluploving.com slash PVC. You will get that and it's going to get you started on the right path. Okay. Now, quick introduction to myself. Thank you, Roger, for the great intro. I'll continue a little bit with it. It's hi, I'm Lucas Mattiello and I help entrepreneurs become confident speakers. So they live their dreams. So they live their dreams. So you build the business that you desire. So you make the impact that you're put on this planet to make. That's my mission. That's what I'm here to do. And I do this through intensive in-person workshops and on an online course called confident on video. So either one of those is very effective. You know, we get you to face yourself. We get you to break through. So you become the best version of yourself, the most confident version of yourself. I am a TEDx speaking coach. I've worked with speakers for many years to get them on big stages and been featured in Forbes. And I've trained over 700 clients and 700 clients. This is not, you know, in, in massive, you know, hundred person seminars, this is in small workshops. And why it's important is because when you work with people in that small environment, you get to see the real fears that are coming back. And I'll tell you right now, it is not about the video content. That is such a small piece of the equation. But yet all my clients that come into confident on video, the first thing they want is what do I say? You know, what's the topics? I don't even know where to start. That is such a small part of it, but it's essential. But once we knock that off and we're, we'll cover that actually today, then we start moving forward, which is into the deeper work. And ultimately this is about having the confidence and the courage to put yourself out there. That's the real work that needs to be addressed in order for you to become that confident leader who shares their message, who makes a massive impact in the world and builds your dream business. Okay. So that's what we're going to cover and get you started there. Now myself, how I started, where I started, I started with anxiety and panic attacks. Uh, the first panic attack happened when I was 14 years old. I was in high school, I was wrestling. And I remember I was in practice one day and I was held in a, in a hold and I, I felt like I couldn't escape, get out of it. And I thought I was having a heart attack. It, it felt like I was going to die. And I was so shocked by it. I, I just didn't know what to do. After the match, I run to the washroom. I throw some cold water in my face. I come back and I'm like, you know, what, what was that? Come back, next match comes in, go practice, get put in a hold, can't get out. Boom, the same thing happens. And what happened with that was it was a recurring theme that would last for the next two years in wrestling. And I was stuck in a tough place because I was looking around and I saw everybody else in practice. There were 60 other wrestlers in there. Nobody was running out in between practice. Nobody was you know, going and making excuses to go to the bathroom to try to get a break. And it created this sense of what's wrong with me, you know, and, and maybe you've experienced that in yourself, maybe not with panic attacks or anxiety, but some other way where you look at other people and you think, how come it's so much easier for them? You know, why can't I be like everybody else? And so that was the dynamic that it set up for me because I know what I was feeling. It felt like I was dying all the time, but I was very ashamed and embarrassed. And I was afraid if people knew what was happening to me and what was going on that I'd be rejected. And so I didn't express, I didn't put myself out there because of the fear of what other people would think. I didn't tell my coach, I didn't tell my parents. So I struggled with it in silence for the next 15 years. And 15 years is a long time to go, you build up armor, you're always afraid of what people are gonna think and it really erodes your confidence when you're in that state. And so after 15 years, I was laid off from my job in finance and that was just really took it to the next level where you know, have the job layoff, felt like I lost my identity. You know, my, I was being left behind. Everyone's moving forward. I ended up seeing the doctor. He looked at me and goes, you look terrible. What's going on? I told him the situation and he goes, we need to get you some help. And the next week, this is where I was. This is Bernie B. General Mental Hospital. 
I showed up there, drove into the parking lot, and I'll never forget the day. It was, I was 29, getting ready to go to 30 years old, and I'm looking at that front door, and I'm thinking, you know, once I walk in there, my life will never be the same. Okay, my life will never be the same. You know, what's going to happen to me? I'm going to have no future. Uh, I was very angry. You know, what did I do to deserve this? You know, what's going to happen to me moving forward? And I was looking at it going, if I live to about 70, that's going to be 40 years. I can't go another 40 years like this. I've already been struggling 15 years. I can't go another, you know, 40 years like this. And I was in a very dark spot. But just before I walked into that entrance, I thought about it. And I said, you know what, maybe this is going to be the change that I need. Maybe I'm finally going to get the help that's going to get me on the right path. And I went in, I met the psychiatrist. He was an amazing individual. Uh, he talked to me. I was diagnosed with panic disorder. I entered a stress management you know, recovery program, had to change my lifestyle, change my diet. And I had to do a lot of exposure therapy to face my fears. And that was a life changer because going through that, I finally got hope. I had a path. I had a mentor and I was taking the actions to rebuild my life. And so I started this journey of rebuilding my life. And I was thinking the dark place that I was, so many people, you know, I was crippled by the shame and the fear. And I thought there's gotta be other people that are facing the same thing and I just wanna help them. And so I started, I started doing videos. This was years ago, you can see my hair was very different. Uh, that was actually dyed hair, to be honest. Uh, I was very insecure about gray hairs. So I dyed my hair jet black, uh, but I started speaking about this and I had a lot of fear and maybe you're experiencing it too. It's you want to put yourself out there, but I didn't feel like I was good enough. You know, I, I wasn't a psychiatrist. I wasn't a counselor. You know, I, I wasn't a psychologist. I didn't have the credibility. And so I was very afraid to put my message out there, but in my heart, I felt like it was the right thing to do. I came from a place that I wanted to help people and I wanted to let them know that they weren't alone. So I saw a Gary Vaynerchuk video where he was speaking about this and he was saying, look, if, if you have, you know, never mind the outside world, never mind what people think. If you have a message that you believe in, put it out there. People will find you. And that really inspired me. You know, sometimes you just have that mentor that shares that right message that just sparks you up and you're like, that's what I'm going to do. And I started, did this, and you can see in the corner, you know, it's got almost 180,000 views. And this is some video I did in my parents' basement with a, I, I stole some, some fabric from my mom's sewing room, used it as a backdrop, because that was my bedroom window. You record it with my phone. I bought two $10 construction lamps that you clamp on, clamp them on from Home Depot, no microphone, and I just did that video. And I got started and it took off. And it was because I spoke with authenticity, spoke from the heart, and it was a message that people were looking for. The irony of this is that all my insecurities, not being qualified, not being a medical professional, all these things worked to my advantage because people related with it because I was being very real. And so I share that with you is you don't have to be the top expert to get started. You just have to get started because there are people that are waiting for you to show up and to share your message. And it's actually a greedy thing if you don't. Okay. It's, the irony is my ideal clients are heart centered. They want to make an impact, but when they don't share their message, it's actually being greedy because you're withholding your brilliance because of fears of not looking good. And that's my intention for today is to break through those fears so that you give yourself permission to get started. So I did this, started going, we mentioned do TEDx talks and coaching. And, and this was the shifted. I was putting myself out there, but then it turned around for me when I, I was able to start helping people get on big stages. And I realized that's how I can actually make the biggest impact is to help leaders get on big stages. So they really make an impact in the world. Now, the, one of the top obstacles that come up is either speaking or on videos. People look at other people that are further ahead than them, they're more experienced, have bigger followings, go, oh my God, they're so much different. And I wanna share with you that everyone on stage, we see this and we think, oh, I can't do this, but it's not true. You don't see the behind the scenes. And so we have this picture, this is Melissa. I loved working with Melissa, getting, getting her on that stage. She gave an amazing talk. But the one thing that was constant with every single one of my clients is that there were moments like these, where these are behind the scenes, uh, this was actually a candid picture. I didn't know it was being taken, but this was just before she got up to do her talk. She just turns to me. She's like, Lucas, I need to, you know, I need you to hold my hand. I said, all right, I'm here for you. Held hands. She walked on stage and delivered an amazing talk. And that's the one constant. I wish everybody could see the behind the scenes for TEDx or these people that do massive videos is that everybody has their own fears and insecurities in the green room and on that journey. 
and we need someone in our corner that's going to hold our hand and guide us so that we win on stage. Okay. So I share that with you and that's what we do now. Uh, even people in my Confidant video course, we get them speaking, get them going. This is Jackie. Uh, Jackie came into to Confident on video and he posted this up there. He's like, my first official public, very scary video. You know, and this is something he just recorded in his office. He went on there and in the first six weeks, he did 10 videos, put them out there. Uh, through putting his video out there, somebody who has a podcast and a YouTube show saw his video and said, hey, I'd love for you to come on the show. He went on the show, they had a great interview, and now he's the in-house resident financial advisor for this, for this YouTube show. And now, going through that, he got really inspired and said, you know what, I need to start my own YouTube show and podcast. So now he's doing it. And this is someone that went in who's, he's never done one video before Confident Video. Never put one video out there. This was his first video he did this, and this was week two, he put it out. And in that six week period, he did 10 videos, has been on podcast and now launched his own. I mean, this is the power of video. And the, the biggest thing here is the courage to jump in and get started, okay? So I share that with you to say, this is the time to do it, to get started because everyone's going there and that's the only way we got. It's the only way we got to thrive. Now, there's one key business question I want you to ask yourself. And that is this, how many people have seen your offer this week? You know, a lot of times people come into these types of events or like, hey, I wanna do video but how is this gonna help my business? I wanna grow my business, absolutely. This is the one question to ask yourself. How many people have seen your offer this week? How many people have you given the opportunity to further engage with you, to buy your products and services? And again, with live events shut down, there's only one way to get that out there, and that is video. Okay, that's the most effective way for you to get your message out there. So this is the key question to ask yourself. If you wanna build your business, all you need to do is get your offer in front of more people. It's the fastest way to do it, is through video. So this is the thing. If you get, you know, start doing videos, could you get 10 times more people to see your offer by sharing it? Likely, that's likely. If you're not doing many videos or just doing a few sporadically, become consistent with it. It's the fast way to build your business. So this is the key question. Now we're gonna jump right into this. It's three steps to start your confident on video journey so you win. Again, I'm gonna emphasize this and reemphasize. This is about so you can win. We're in a very interesting time right now where the world has changed. Okay, we're in a new reality. We're in the exposure era. It's about sharing your message online. Otherwise, you're invisible. Okay, the train has left the station and now it's about getting on it. So either you want to get on it, try to catch up, or you're going to be left behind. I'm going to share with you three steps to get you started. Now, this is the top obstacle that comes up for many people. They go, Lucas, I'd love to do videos, but what would I even say? You know, what would I even say? Well, we'll, we'll tackle this right now. We're going to get right into it. If you want to get started with this and, and you know, they have some fears that come up though. So the, some of the fears we'll address right now is, you know, what if I say isn't liked by the viewers? Okay. That's a good one. Right. What if, what if it's not liked by, by everyone? Okay. You know, I don't have hours to think of video ideas. This is a big one comes up. We're going to, I'll share with you a, a, a strategy that comes up. You'll be able to get a year's worth of content in less than an hour just by filling in the questions. So this is a big one comes up. I don't have hours to think of video content. You know, I don't want to just add more noise to an already noisy world, right? I don't want to just do videos and just ramble about nothing. There's, I see enough of that already. I don't want to contribute to that. And so that's a, that's a common situation that comes up. These are top fears. Now, what I'll share with you is a, the strategy, how you can actually create targeted content and the videos that your ideal clients want to see. Now, here's the thing too, even to address this top fear, you know, what if what I say isn't liked by my viewers? It's like, hey, your ideal clients are going to resonate with it. You know, one of the biggest shifts here is this is not wanting to be liked by everyone. This is about showing up in your truest sense, your most authentic voice and attracting your ideal clients only. You don't want to be liked by everybody. You don't want everyone to watch and go, that's the person for me. But in order to be loved, okay, this is a key one. I would definitely write this down. In order to be loved by many, you must be disliked by a few. Okay. In order to be loved by many, you must be disliked by a few because most people, they fear putting themselves on video. Go, what if people don't like me? What if I'm not loved by everybody? We got to lose that narrative and go really embrace it. Double down that in order to have that tribe of people that get you and that want to work with you even deeper, you got to have some people that are like, nope, not the right person for me. And that's perfectly okay. That's actually something to embrace. So the first thing we're looking at when we're getting specific, okay? When you're looking at what to say, first to get specific, who is your audience? 
So get really clear that your videos are being said, they're, they're being directed to a very specific person. Again, you're not trying to win everybody over. You're only trying to attract your ideal clients. You want people who are not a fit to disengage, to scroll past, to stop watching your video as soon as you can. You don't want that. Who you want is to only attract your ideal client. So again, just top basic level, getting clear with your ideal client. You know, what is their occupation? What do they do? You know, where are they located? How old are they? What's the age range? What are the problems that they're facing? This is big. Get very clear with what are the problems that they're facing? And lastly, what is the solution that you can provide them? So videos, you're not solving all of their problems, but what you are saying is, hey, this is the problem and this is a solution. You know, if there's one thing that I will emphasize or a mistake that I commonly see is people, you know, entrepreneurs and business owners, they try to solve too many problems with one video. Again, just think about this. This is a very specific video. You're addressing one problem and you're giving one specific solution. That's it. It's going to create just tight content. It's going to go in. Hey, are you struggling with this? This is a solution. Boom. Just come from a place of, of adding value and that's going to build up your expertise. So first thing is really get specific, get clear on who your audience is. Now the second one is then you got to look at it, go, okay, well, I know who I'm talking to. Well, where are they? You know, and I had a client reach out and she was like, oh, hey, should I start TikTok videos? And I'm like, well, are your clients teenagers? She's like, no, she's a, she's a realtor. She's like, no, my clients are, you know, usually in their, you know, in their thirties to fifties. I said, oh, okay, then they're not there. Why would you start a, uh, on that platform? And you know, the response is, oh, it's, I hear it's popular. I hear there's a lot of people there. Just because it's popular doesn't mean you need to be there. Okay. Just get very clear with where are your, where are your ideal clients hanging out? Is it Facebook? Is it Instagram? Get clear with the platforms. There's so many different options. You could do, you know, Facebook, you could do videos for your Instagram, you can do a YouTube channel, uh, you can do videos, put them on your website, send them to emails, link it to that. You can do online events, you can do your own webinars. You have so many different options, but just really get clear with where do you want your videos to be? Where are your audience hanging out, right? Where is your audience hanging out? That's the first thing. And the reason you wanna do video, okay, this drives me crazy more than anything. When people talk about this, they say, hey, I just started a podcast. I go, okay, well, are you recording it on video? And they say, no. What? Why wouldn't you record the video? Well, you know, I just want to, I just want to record the audio. No, no, no. It's crazy. It's a complete waste of time. Video is the king of content. You start with the video and then you repurpose it. There's so many things you can do with it. You take that video, you upload it. You take the audio out. Now you have your podcast. You can take the transcript of that video, turn that into a blog post. You can chop it up, make a little 30 second, one minute teaser clips that you can share on social media. You can come up with image quotes. It gives you all of these opportunities. So the second thing is really just get clear with where are your ideal clients hanging out? Okay, you gotta fish where the fish are. Get clear with it, that's gonna help you in, in that respect, okay? Lucas. Yes, sir. Two questions from Marnie. Okay. Why does the age, why does the age of what you are looking for matter? And the second question is, do you need to pick just one platform? Well, you know, age, for example, like TikTok, if, if your clients, I mean, there are people that are not teenagers on TikTok, but that's primarily geared towards teenagers. So why would you put up videos on a platform that your ideal clients aren't, aren't hanging out? So that, that's the one thing with age. Uh, the other one too, is if you're running ads, if you're doing video ads, you get to select where, you know, who gets to see it. If you go on Facebook, and you get to, to get, dial in to the age demographic. So again, if your clients are say 30 to 50, for example, you don't want people that are in their teens getting it because they're, they're not gonna buy or you know or older. So that, that's why it's important. And so what was the second question? Second question was, do I need to pick just one platform? No, great question. So you don't need to just pick one, but on the opposite end, a lot of marketing coaches are pushing people they say, oh, you need to get on every platform. And then I work with a client and they get overwhelmed. You know, they're like, how do I, how do, I do all this? And then what happens when we get overwhelmed, we shut down, we don't do anything. So the, the thing is with that is pick the platforms, two things. One, where your clients are. So where are they hanging out? But then the second one is what platforms do you enjoy? You know, and that, that's a big one that's often overlooked is people look at like, I, they, they operate from this fear of missing out. I need to be on everything. 
I never advocate that. If you do not like the platform, you're not going to show up. Uh, you're not going to show up to be fully engaged with it. So I would leave that alone. Question from Barry. How can a student looking for work use video? Oh man, that's a great question. How can a student looking? Well, so typically I work with entrepreneurs, but if this is a student and you're looking for a job, I think the, the easiest way to do it is record a video talking about how this job, how you're a good fit for this job, what's different about you, why you want to work there. I think that's one of the, the most effective ways because here's the thing, that's going to make you stand out from the crowd. So just imagine that there's a job app, you know, there's a job opening. Most people are going to send in resumes and reach out that way, but then you do a custom video, you know, talking about why you love the company, why you love the brand, why you're a good fit. That's going to stand out. Plus it's going to showcase your personality where you look at a traditional resume. It's just text and you're like, okay, yeah, that checks some boxes. But when you work, you know, when you're working with somebody, it, it's a lot about the emotional connection in the field. And that is a much richer experience on video than, than text-based. Thank you. Yeah, you're most welcome. Great questions. All right, so some topic of it is, what we're gonna talk about now is how you can get a year's worth of content, okay, a year's worth of topic ideas in less than an hour. And I'm not saying that we're gonna do it right now because we don't have an hour to go through it all, but it's something that you can write down these five subjects and come up with your own topics, okay? So the first is just write out what are the problems and challenges your ideal clients have? So that's the first one. Just write a list. What are the top problems and challenges your clients have? That's the first category. The second is frequently asked questions. What are the top most commonly asked questions? All right, what are the frequently asked questions that you get from your ideal clients, from your prospective clients? What is they ask? The reason I'm saying this is each one of these is a potential video for you. Okay, it's a potential video. So frequently asked questions. Uh, the third category is SAQs, should ask questions. So what are questions that your ideal clients should ask, but they don't? You know, this is often counterintuitive, but as a professional, as an expert, there's questions that people should ask. Like for me, if they're asking about, if they're asking about what, you know, what makes our trainings different than other trainings, because there's so, especially with public speaking, there's so many different public speaking trainers out there. And what they should ask, what my client should ask is, well, why would I work with you versus, you know, anyone else, Toastmasters or, or other trainers that do that? And the reason I would ask is, I would answer that is saying, you know, most public speaking training is very much, uh, it's very heavy on the technical side, on the scripting, on the messaging, on the storytelling, which that's important. But the one thing that when people are going on big stages or putting themselves out there, just getting started, it's not about the message. It's about the vulnerability and putting yourself out there and facing the crowd of the potential rejection. And that's the emotional part. And that's where I specialize in. I'll tell you right now, if, if you're looking for storytelling or messaging, there are people that are way better than me at that. But when it comes from being in your corner to help you overcome the fear, to put yourself out there, there's nobody that beats what we do. And so that's an example of a should ask question is you know what differentiates you versus everyone else. These are all good. There's so many good ideas in there. The fourth category is client stories client success stories, stories about clients that have had setbacks, even failure stories. You know, did you have clients that it just didn't work out? Well, what characteristics, what attributes were there that it just wasn't a good fit, right? These are, these are all great topic ideas, okay? And you can come up with so many different ideas for each one. And then the fifth one is personal stories. So your why, you know, how you got started, what you see changing in your industry, what has changed, where it's going in the future. See, these are all topic ideas. So again, this is five topic categories here that if all you did is you did 10 videos for each one of these, you came up with 10 problems, you know, 10 challenges, 10 frequently asked questions, 10 should ask questions, 10 client stories, 10 personal stories, which is easy to do. If you did one for each, you would have 50 videos and that would give you enough content if you did one video a week to do that for a year. Okay, so it's an easy way we will jot down and come up with a ton of different ideas. And that's going to solve that first problem, which is how do I, you know, what am I going to say? Now, the beauty of this is this is coming from a place of adding value because people are looking to solve their problems. And this is one of the biggest shifts in terms of platforms. YouTube, something to keep in mind, YouTube is a search engine. And it's a number two search engine. Yes, there's a lot of cat videos and, you know, prank videos and all those things, but it's also the number two place where people go to look for answers. 
So if you look at it from the standpoint of what are problems that my deal clients are facing and you're doing videos and you're putting up there to answer and to add value, that's the fastest way for you to build up your authority. Okay. So again, you have a framework right now, right in front of you that you can come up with easily a year's worth of content, just map out, jot down in under an hour. You can get this done. Okay. You can get this done. So this is step one. You don't have to worry about what to say anymore. Now you got tons of ideas and that's going to move us to the next piece, which is step two, which is the equipment to be on video. Now this comes up a lot. People get a little bit rattled by it. They go, you know, what, what am I going to, what, what equipment do I need? And some common fears that come up with this, well, I want to do video, but I'm going to have to buy a lot of extra equipment or I don't have access or space for a video studio. So that makes sense. You know, or I'm not a professional when it comes to recording videos. These are all the top, myths and the fears that come up. And I, I have good news with for you. You don't need to buy a lot of extra equipment. You don't need a video studio and you don't need to be a professional. Okay. All of these, we can just put to the side and I'll share with you why. Now, what is the equipment that you need to record video? It's very simple. You need a phone. Okay. Do you have a phone? Probably you do. Okay. You need a cell phone. Requirement number two, a voice. Do you have a voice box? Do you have vocal cords? Do you have the ability to speak? All right, if you got that, that's that's required equipment number two. And number three, courage. That's it, courage to put yourself out there. When you give yourself permission just to get started, it's not about being professional. It's not about having a team around you. It's not about having you know video shoots and editing, all this stuff. You can get that done. But when we look at what's required to get started, all you need is a phone, a voice and courage. Okay. And when you have that courage, it's about making an impact. A lot of times this is a piece that I share this in the confident video course. It's uncomfortable to hear, but it's true is that people are more concerned about looking bad than of truly making an impact. Okay. And that's a hard one. It can be a hard one for some people to really embrace, but it's absolutely true because in today's world, there are people that are struggling that are waiting for your service waiting for you to show up and help them, but they don't know who you are. And there's only one way that's going to fast track you to do that. And that is by doing videos. All you need is a phone, a voice and courage. And yet people stop because they're afraid of looking bad or it's, you know, they're not going to look professional or it might hurt their reputation instead of focusing on, Hey, let me help somebody else. They're more focused on look. If I don't want to look bad. It's like, okay. But if you're truly heart centered and you want to make an impact, that's a piece where we got to check in the mirror and go, I'm committed to actually make a difference and I'm gonna start doing these videos. The good news is you're not gonna get a lot of views right away. Okay, people aren't gonna see you if you see that and you just get started, but the skill set that you build, that's gonna be the key to move forward. Okay. Now there is some next level equipment. If you want, you get a tripod with a phone holder. You know, that's that's a good thing to have, so you're not holding it. Uh, you can get a microphone, they have some good options, you know, starting around thirty dollars. You can start with a thirty dollar lapel mic that plugs into your phone makes it very simple and if you want you can get a ring light you know this is another option that you can get it's going to help you a lot okay this is next level equipment lucas ready for a couple of questions yep i'm gonna turn my light on here it's getting dark uh Hemant's question there are many software tools that allow flexibility and have templates to create professional videos using animation or video clips what is their level of effectiveness compared to a video in which you yourself are in? Okay. Animated videos over person. I mean, look, I'm not a fan. I'll be honest with you. I'm not a fan. I think they're, you know, the animation, they can say it's more engaging, but at the end of the day, I want to see and connect with the person. I mean, I, I connect with a face more than a, a, an, an animation or a cartoon. So I would, you know, if you want to have some explainer videos, which are very popular, Definitely there's softwares out there, makes it easy, but I would test it out. But I would always come back to you as a person showing up because when they hire you and they work with you, they're not working with an animation or cartoon, they're working with you. Question from Marnie, how long should your video be? You know, that's a, that's a great question, Marnie. There's no set answer to that. You know, a lot of times people say there's, there's no such thing as too long, only too boring. It's kind of like a, a standard, uh, answer, but if you're looking at it, if you want something as a guideline, when I work with clients, I say, look, between two to four minutes, uh, when we look at YouTube, that's typical drop off rates start to come around there. So anywhere between two to four minutes, if you want to start, the problem is it's, it's an evolution. 
And there are videos that go, once you hit 10 minutes and above, you know, 10 to 15, some of those videos perform really well and Google starts to favor them because it keeps people engaged and on the platform longer. So it's, it's, a, it's an inexact science, but if you want to start off, I would say two to four minutes, just get in, focus on what's one problem, give a solution to that problem and you're out, two to four minutes, get started. Then you can start looking at the longer videos. Question from Barry, what video editor would you recommend? I would, I would recommend outsourcing it to not doing it. That, that's, that's, my, that's my recommendation for that. I mean, in terms of if you want to do it yourself and you want to do it on your phone, uh, there's an app called Kinemaster. So Kinemaster, K-I-N-E-M-A-S-T-E-R. I have no affiliate with it. I have no links, but it is a very good service. It's something if you want to do it yourself, but as entrepreneurs, I have not found it effective uh, to be using your time to, to edit videos because what often happens is that adds to the process and the, and the frustration. And then people go, oh, I hate this video thing. It takes way too long. I have other things I need to do. And then they stop. So my suggestion, if you are going to do it, use, use an app. But my recommendation is always to outsource it. You can go to, you know, like fiverr.com, uh, Upwork, all those freelancer sites. There's people that that's what they do, that they're professional at it. And you can get videos edited professionally for, for a low cost. Thank you. No more questions. All right. Keep them coming. This is good. Thank you. Step three, how to be confident on video. So this is the third step. And this is, in my opinion, the most important. So step one was what to say. We got clear on that. We got a lot of ideas. You know the gear. You know the platforms. You're like, okay, I'm going to focus on. And if you want to start off, just start off on one platform. Whatever makes it easiest, okay? Make, start off, make it easy. And then we got the gear. All you need is a phone and courage and a voice. You want to get a lapel mic or a tripod. That's cool. But you don't need a lot of gear. This is the most important, in my, my opinion, and this is what I specialize in, so I am biased towards it. Now, the top fears that come from being on video, okay? The first one, it's, it's funny. I, I did 47 calls in a week and a half about three months ago. The number one fear that came up, I don't want to look bad, okay? It's, there's this fear about looking bad, about humiliation, about you have a certain reputation, and if your videos don't look good, it's going to take away from it. I understand it, but that's the top fear that comes up. The second one was, I'm not the top expert. So a lot of it was, I'm not the top expert. So I know other people that have more credibility or experience than me in this industry. And I don't feel like it, I am qualified to share my, my expertise on video. This is a common one that comes up. <laughs> the third one, I'll put videos out if they're perfect and well-received. Okay, this is, this is a beautiful one. And I'll tell you right now, so looking bad, we got to get over that because here's the thing. This is step one in our, in our hierarchy of confidence, but I'll get into that in a, in a, in a few minutes. But step one is about self-compassion and it's overcoming the inner critic. So the first one is I don't want to look bad. What happens is people think that their inner critic and how critical they are of seeing themselves on videos is what everybody else is seeing. So you do a video, you get a hundred views and like, oh my gosh, there's a hundred people being that hard on me. This is terrible. That's not the case. We are our own worst critic, and I'll address that as we get there. The top expert thing, well, how do you become the top expert? You do it by putting yourself out there and building your reputation. Again, we're in the exposure era. This is about who knows you, okay? So how you become the top expert or even an expert is about getting started. And even the role of expert, if you have knowledge that's helping your ideal clients, then in their mind, you are an expert. You might know that there's people in the industry that are more experienced or have more expertise than you, but they don't. And the, all it comes down to is that they are looking for help and you can provide them help. That's all it comes down to. So get started. And then the third one, I'll put videos out if they're perfect and well-received. Uh, that's never going to happen. Okay. There's never going to be a video that's perfect and it's never going to get hundred uh, percent thumbs up and everyone loving it. So we need to move past that and go, okay, I'm not here to be loved by everyone. I'm here to attract and inspire the people that connect with me. And the last one is I have struggled for years and I don't think it's possible. I don't think it's possible to ever become confident. And I hear all these stories, Lucas, I, I feel like I've never been heard. I feel, I don't like being in the spotlight. I don't like this. That's okay. That's who you were in the past, but this is not who you can become. You are someone that can be very powerful. You can put yourself on a video. And one thing I'll share about this whole journey about being confident on video when people work with me, they come in, they say, I need to find my voice. You need to help me find my voice. This is not about finding your voice. This is about reclaiming your voice. Okay. And that's a very big key here. 
is that when we come into this world as kids, we are fully self-expressed. We're putting our message out that we're living in full color. And then we get embarrassed. You know, maybe it was about reading in front of the class in school growing up. Maybe it was feeling humiliated, you know, in your family. Maybe it was a family members telling you to keep down, stop being so loud. It could have been society saying, hey, you're, you're being over the top. You know, just be a bit more humble, whatever it is. We come in fully self-expressed and then we get shut down. This is not about finding your voice. This is about you reclaiming it and giving yourself permission to get started. Now, how we do this, it's through my proprietary system. So again, from people that have been deathly afraid of speaking to get them start doing the first talks and videos to people at TEDx and bigger videos, to doing you know, summits in a, on a big stage, it's the same process. I take everybody through it and it's a six step system. The first one is compassion, then it's commitment. Okay, so compassion is about going from your, your number one inner critic to your number one fan. Commitment is commitment to become the best version of yourself because who you are today isn't gonna be the person that's gonna be confident on video. We need to become a different person. We need to become a different version of ourselves and that's gonna require doing different actions. And that action is about courage. It's about putting yourself out there in the face of uncertainty. This is where most people get stuck is they go, oh, if I know it's gonna be well received, if I know it's gonna go well, then I will put myself out there. You will never have that guarantee it's about taking action in the face of uncertainty, going, I don't know what's going to happen, but let me do it. And when you do that, that leads to step four, which is competence. And competence is where it becomes your new skill set. It becomes familiar. And then it leads to conviction, which is where you speak with power and passion. We're able to lead people to take that action they need to go. And then it leads to step six, which is confidence. And confidence is defined by your belief in yourself and your abilities. This is where you create your own ticket. You go, where do I want to go? What do I want to do? What do I want to say? Versus what can I say? Okay. Other world, you're limited, confident world. It's freedom. It's up to you to decide where you want to go. Now, most people, they want to go, oh, hey, let me just go from right there to confidence. It doesn't happen that way. Instead, it is a step-by-step -step process. We got to go up these levels and we build up to become your most confident self. Now, the first three we can talk about today, but competence, conviction, and confidence, that takes a long time. That's something that needs to be implemented. So we're gonna talk about the first three to get you started moving forward. Now, compassion, what we need to do, first thing is reduce your inner critic. So progress, not perfection. You know, a lot of times people get stuck because they think, oh, it has to be perfect. It's not perfect, it's not perfect. Instead, we need to flip this around and focus on giving ourselves credit for the progress that we made. Maybe it's putting out your first video. Maybe it's getting going. Whatever it is, start with that. It's progress, not perfection. The second one is celebrate the action, not the results. A common trap that comes up is people, they get fixated on the result. If people love my video, if I put it out there and people book calls with me, if I put the video out there and people buy, that's when it's a success. That's not the case. We need to celebrate the action. And the action is, I said yes to do this video. I put it out there. I got zero views or I got 10,000 views. Doesn't matter. You celebrate the action, not the result. The third one is focusing on the gain, not the gap. Again, this is a common one, ties into the comparison trap. And the comparison trap is, say you're getting started with videos and you see people that are you know, further ahead, have bigger audiences or more polished or professional. We downplay how many years it took for them to get there and just focus on, oh, I'm here and they're so much further ahead than me. Again, we need to focus on the gain. That's the gain that you make. How can you be kind to yourself? to start moving forward with it. And then the fourth one and the last one here around compassion is that you deserve to attract people that align with you, okay? This is a lot about just saying, I deserve to attract people that I love working with. Whereas in the other paradigm, when we're low in self-compassion, it's this, this, there's a bit of desperation, like I need to win everybody over, you know, I need to be liked by everybody. Instead, when you have that high compassion, like, look, I'm here, I'm gonna be myself and I deserve to attract people that align with me. This ultimately comes down to your self-image. And that's why when I work with people, it's so much inner work. Okay, that's 80% of the journey is about the inner work, 20% is the technical because this is self-image. It's that do you deserve, do you feel that you deserve to attract your ideal clients? Do you feel that you deserve to be successful, that you deserve to be heard? This is where we start off with it, okay? So, and even this is a, an example, I had Teddy come in. Teddy's a fitness trainer, he started off and you know, we got started, a lot was the compassion. It was funny, he came in, he was like, oh, I just need the technical piece. You know, what's the tags I need to do to post my videos? 
how to get more views. I'm like, don't worry, we'll get to that. We got to start off with this. And you know, he had had a YouTube channel for years, but he didn't put out the videos. His inner critic, when we got working, it was too high and the videos were never good enough to put them out there. You know, maybe you identify with that. You know, are you holding back because the videos aren't good enough to get started? That's a very common trap. Uh, we addressed some of these self image issues and he recorded two videos in the first three weeks. That's it. Two videos that he put out there. And as he started doing that, he started to see a boost in his YouTube channel. He started getting clients from social media. And now he has the confidence to put himself out there and a system that he can replicate to continuously do this. You're getting a skill set. You're gaining a high income skill when you become confident on video because you get a system that's going to help you. And you can see here, he's got a small channel, right? 125. But look at that. When he joined the program in the first 28 days, he got 27 new subscribers. You know, his views went up 248%. His watch time went up 156%. This, although it's a small channel, these are big gains and it creates momentum. So it creates momentum that you can build on and keep moving forward with it. It's a very powerful process to have. Step two in the system was commitment. Okay. So step two in commitment. And this again, who you, you know, who you are today, it won't get you to your goals. And that's something we just need to embrace and be like, all right, it doesn't make you a bad person, but it's also recognizing that if you were that person, you would be doing it right now. If you had the confidence to be on video, well, you'd be doing videos consistently, sharing your message, getting clients, and you'd be right in on this gold rush of an opportunity right now, instead of looking, going like, okay, I want to get started. doesn't make you bad, but it's a reality where we are right now. Now, here's the thing too, with this the commitment is you must break through your familiar zone. People talk about the comfort zone all the time. I don't believe in it at all. It's really the familiar zone. Because if you did a lot of videos, if you were consistently putting out there, if you had a system to do that and the support and accountability, you would be doing that all the time. Okay. So it's not about the comfort zone. It's about the familiar zone. And the more you do it, the more familiar you get, the easier it is. With commitment, it's just getting clear with who you serve. Okay. So a lot of times people think about this, like if you're not laser focused on your ideal client, it gets wishy-washy. But when you know exactly who you're speaking to, that's where you have more power and more confidence. And you're able to establish that I am the expert and I know exactly who I'm going after and who these videos are for. And when you get that, that's going to move you really forward. And the last one with commitment is focus beyond yourself, be a role model. So a lot of times people look at it and we got to go past it and really focus that I am a role model, that I'm here to play a bigger game, but also you're going to build your business through video. You're going to make a bigger impact. You're going to make more money, all of this. And there's people around you that are going to see you being the role model and you're starting a change for them of what's possible. And so there's responsibility that comes with it, but we got to go beyond ourselves because when the commitment's low, it's easy to go, Oh, this feels uncomfortable. I don't want to do it. Instead, we got to break through that. Okay. So that's step two commitment. And you know, even commitment starting with a leader, we got Jasmine. She did the confident video course. She works in, in, uh, in financial services. She launched her channel within six weeks. You know, the first two weeks were getting started. She uploaded seven videos in six weeks. And now she's on the fast path to becoming a leader in her, in her industry. Again, you, look at this. It's not about getting a ton of views. She just got started. She was just putting these videos out there, but she's starting a new chapter, a new way. These videos also, she's putting in them on LinkedIn. She's sharing them on Facebook. She's getting hundreds of views and she just started a new channel. She's already getting views. Like, you know, it's got these bottom ones had a hundred and change. Again, this is people that are knowing who you are. Think about that. You know, even this say whatever, 60 views for this one, 60, that's 60 people who now know who she is. So just imagine if you had the ability to record, you know, a five or a seven minute video and you put it out there and 60 people know who you are, how many coffee meetings would that take? How many talks that aren't even happening would there have to be to do that? It's the fastest way for you to build your business. And it's about getting committed to move, move forward with it. And the third step is courage. Lucas, would you like to take a crack at Barry's question? Uh, how to do a one shoot take? Yes. Well, Sorry, first, a one take shoot. One take shoot. I would say great question, Barry, but look at it. I would ask you why, why is it important to do one shot? That's the first thing. Uh, because when it's a video, you don't have to do that. If it's a live video, then that's, that's a way to go for it. But, Ultimately, what this comes down to is the one shot. It, it do, does come down often to self-trust because a lot of times if we don't trust ourselves, we're thinking, we're like, oh my God, should I say this? What am I saying? You're in your head too much instead of in your heart. And so that can be the shift to move forward with it is stopping critical and actually be here. 
imagine that you're talking to your ideal client, that they were right in front of you, that you're connecting with them through the screen and speak directly to them. Because when people get distracted, think about the hundreds of viewers that could be watching it and in their head, trying to sound smart, as opposed to going inside and go, what is it that I want to say? Uh, that's something that's going to hold you back from doing one take. So I, I love doing one takes because you go, you just bang it out, but it comes down to, you got to be in the flow. You got to be present and think that you're talking to one person, your ideal client and speak from your heart. When you're in your head, you're dead. Get away from that. When you're thinking about everything, you don't want to forget anything. That's going to keep you sidetracked. Okay. So that that's going to help you with that. So when it comes to courage, first of all, don't be vanilla. Okay. That's one thing. If there's one thing you take away from this talk, don't be vanilla. And vanilla is plain. It's boring. It's trying to fit in. Think about, you know, videos when you're putting yourself out there, we're in an ice cream shop and there's 30 flavors. As you're walking through, what's going to catch your eye? It's the exotic flavors. It's something that's different. Something that stands out. What's not going to catch your eye is vanilla. You're just going to pass through it. So on this journey, you're an entrepreneur, you're sharing your message. This isn't about being vanilla. This is about shining and being who you are, speaking your truth, being authentic, saying who you work with and who you don't, being very clear with it. And that's going to attract your ideal clients. Two, with courage, speak your truth to attract your tribe. You know, a lot of time people dilute their message because they're afraid of not being liked by everyone. We need to give that up and say, I want to attract my ideal tribe. And the only way to do that is you speak your truth. You want to polarize. And again, this leads to this one. You must polarize to monetize. Anybody who builds a tribe that is successful, every entrepreneur that does it has people that love them and people that don't love them. Okay. If that's where we need to focus on, you need to polarize to monetize. And the last one with courage, it's take action in the face of uncertainty. Okay. Take action in the face of uncertainty. And that's going to get you there. That's what it is because that's the one thing that's the key for you to get in on this gold rush. It's about saying, I don't have all the answers, but I'm going to jump in. Videos scare me. I'm scared to put myself out there. Okay. Let's lean into that fear and break through it. That's the one key that's going to get you there. Okay. You can't think your way through it. It's about the actions. Now, the last thing is entrepreneurs, they need to be on video. Okay. This is wrapping it up here. They, you must be on video. If you're a business owner, it's the only way for you to thrive in today's world. And for some of us, it's going to be coming down to a matter of survival. So the obstacles that come up, you know, just being overwhelmed and not sure where to start. That's a common one, a lack of accountability and support, you know, lacking the templates and the trainings to put your message together, put your video topics, map it out, get started uh, lack of a community to practice. Because it's like, yeah, great. I can just do these videos and start putting on social media right now, but I don't want to hurt my reputation. I don't want to look bad in front of potential clients. And the last one here is not having access to a mentor who's doing what I do and can fast track their success. These are the top obstacles that hold entrepreneurs back from putting themselves on video. And the last one here is self-doubt. Okay. So self-doubt, holding ourselves back, the inner critic and the lack of courage to jump in. These are the obstacles that come up. Maybe you're struggling with them. Maybe it's a couple. You're like, yep, I got that. If that's the case, you're not alone. This is common. This happens to everybody, but there's something we can do. So my whole thing has been about putting yourself into getting started. So what's next? You got a couple options, you know, option one, don't do anything. You say, Hey, that was cool. Sounds good. Oh, gold rush videos. Yeah. Yeah. Cool story. I'm not going to do anything with it. That's an option. You could do that. I wouldn't advise it, but you could do that. It's option, a choice. Uh, option two is try to do it yourself. You can say, hey, this sounds good. I have a phone. I have a voice. I have courage. Please go for it. If that's you and you're like, I want to do it, go ahead. What often happens though is self-doubt comes in, self-sabotage, that inner critic, that procrastination, lack of accountability, and, and we, we don't. Maybe we do a couple of videos and we stop. We don't follow it through. That's a common situation, but you can absolutely try to do it yourself. It might cost you some time and a lot of money and lost opportunities, but it's an option. Option three, get support and guidance from a mentor. And again, if this is me or somebody else, definitely I want you to do it because this is an opportunity that your business depends on it. And there's people out there that you are meant to serve, that you are meant to help, that they're waiting for you to show up. They're waiting for you to show up and share your message. And that's the third one, option three. Guidance from mentor. And if you resonate with my message, like, hey, I like this. I want to know more. I want to work with you and get deeper with this. Uh, I do have a course called Confident Video. It's a six-week program that we do. It's online. Week one, we get clear on your market, your message, and all the gear you need to get you started. You got clarity around that. You get all your topics mapped out. Uh, week two, we get into that topic ideas, content ideas, your platforms. You have that all decided so you know exactly what to say, you know where you're going to say it. 
Uh, week three, we get into the courage. That's where we start moving forward. And a key with this is week one and two, we have our private Facebook group. So you're not posting videos online. You're not potentially embarrassing yourself or hurting your reputation or looking bad. You're doing it in a community of people that are on the same path with you. And that's a really big win because now it's about you putting yourself out there. You can see you do it. Week three, you start to put them public. Week four, we get into creating more engaging videos, you know, advanced storytelling. We get into that. Week five is speaking with conviction, getting those call to actions happening, you know, driving people to book calls, starting selling your product, getting your offer out there. And week six, you create your content calendar. And this is a tool that you have for you moving forward where you have your tool that you can plan out your year's worth of content at the end of week six. So this is a complete system from A to Z that's going to get you to become confident on video. And if you want, you know, we've got Tyler. Uh, Tyler came in. He's doing a lot of things. You know him. He's well known. He started off. He became the face of his organization through video, got started, and now he's on his own journey. The thing is he became committed to be a leader. He's doing videos. He's got doing videos with holding his kid. You know, he's going there. He's doing videos at conferences. The big thing, he's documenting his life. He's documenting his life, and as he's doing it, he's adding value, but he's being a leader. There are many followers in the world, and there are very few leaders. People are looking for you to step up and shine, and Tyler is a great example. He's building his business. He built his dream business, and now he's making a major impact in the world, and that could be you too if you have the courage to put yourself out there. So if you have more info, if you want to know what we do, uh, the Confident Video course, it's a six-week online course. The Video to Victory Method, it's a step-by-step -step formula that will get you to go from content idea to videos, take you through the whole process. There's six training calls that we do. We have six Q&A support calls, and these are important, where it's an open forum where you come up because we expect fears to come up. We expect resistance. You go on there. I'll be answering your questions. You'll be getting the support you need to move you forward because momentum is very important. You're building a skill set. You need momentum. And we have the safe support environment in the Facebook group to practice. Get started there. My whole thing is cry in the dojo. So when you're in front of your clients, you're laughing in the battlefield. You're getting your clients. You feel confident to do so. And if you want more information on that, you want to see the Confident Video course, go to joincov.com. Uh, that's going to give you the registration page. And that's everything you need. If you want to know more about the course, go to joincov.com. That ends our presentation, Roger, uh, the, the recorded one. Lucas, uh, thank you very, very much on behalf of VBN and everyone attending. Uh, your uh, wisdom just never ceases to amaze me. <laughs>